All right, what's going on? Fishaholics, Rich here, and welcome back to hopefully another exciting video. And uh, it's 6.30ish in the morning right now. We're gonna be hitting the surf and uh, of course try and catch some striped bass, maybe bluefish if we can't catch striped bass. And then I'm also gonna bring my inshore light tackle um, Mojo 7'6 inshore spinning rod and my 4000 shield for uh, some fluke. Uh, I don't even know if the season yet is open yet in Jersey, but uh, by the time you see this video, it may be open. But uh, there are, the fluke are in shallow, and um, that'll just increase our chances to catch some fish. And then for striped bass and blues, I'm bringing my 9-foot um, Mojo Surf with my 250 stall. And we got some pre-storm conditions. So I don't know if you guys can see behind me. You know, it's overcast, cloudy, and uh, it's just going to rain in like four or five hours or something like that. So uh, that usually turns on the bite. I'm hoping it will. <laughs> so uh, let's get out there and just you know see what we can catch. All right, so this water looks pretty juicy and uh, it doesn't look too dirty. Yesterday we had a pretty big storm, lots of rain, lots of runoff, but uh, the water looks kind of like in between. It's not too dirty, it's not too clean, and uh, hopefully we can get our bass and blues on top this morning. That's what I was doing last week and it worked pretty well, but you know, the bite only lasted for like a couple hours in the morning and that's another reason why I wanted to bring like a light tackle inshore setup for fluke and then I have this little uh, Nico Bates minnow uh, soft plastic rigged on like a quarter ounce jig head. I've never used that bait. We're gonna try it this morning or this afternoon. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's start casting this uh, JP Lore's pencil. Maybe we'll switch over to a uh, tattoo sea dog if this doesn't work and then uh, we got this big storm coming in you can see over there you know every minute it's getting closer and closer or it looks like it is hmm you know i'm not feeling the pencil popper really this morning let's uh just switch right ahead to that tattoo sea dog This plug right here. So this plug is basically like a big wooden Zara spook, that's all. It just walks the dog really nice along the surface and uh, drives fish crazy. Bass love it, bluefish love it, especially when there's a lot of bunker around. And there has been a lot of bunkers, so this will be perfect for uh, getting some surface strikes if a fish is looking for a bunker. All right, so since the bass and blue bite isn't really uh, panning out, we're going to throw this little bait right here on the edge of the lip where it starts dropping off and see if there's any fluke here in this trough. Fish on, right there. All right, not a fluke, but a sundial. First cast, it's got a full belly. That means there's probably a good amount of bait here. Bait here. There's a fish. Oh, a little striper. Really little striper, right on the edge of the lip. Well, at least we got one. Got something here. Ah, sea robin. All right, we're getting the smorgasbord going here. Sea robin, striper. Sundial, another sundial, a little bigger one. All right, we're doing good. Three trash fish and a striper. Oh man, slow morning, but it's like a perfect morning. And uh, even though we're slaying those sundials, it's lunchtime because <laughs> my lunch you know, seems more exciting than those sundials and the sea robin and the 15 inch striper. And I'm kind of surprised, I don't get it. You know, last week I thought it was slow and I was averaging like two stripers or even, you know, at least two bluefish a morning or an evening. And uh, today all we had were 
two blow-ups on uh, the tattoo uh, sea dog. So yeah, we're gonna eat, eat some lunch and then let the tide swing around. It's gonna start going out, and hopefully that'll uh, you know push some fish in front of us, and we'll have a chance of catching something, even just some bluefish. Ah, that was bad. Hey, got one. All right, let's get back into action. We're gonna try for fluke for like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes before this tide really gets going. And then hopefully once this tide really starts going out and there's a lot of current, we'll successfully switch over to plug in and catch some striped bass and bluefish. Smallest striper of the season right there. Holy crap, that was small. Oh, here we go. Fish on. Something small. Very small. Sundial, I'm guessing. Oh, a fluke. There we go. We didn't even get... <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> well, there he goes. <laughs> He wasn't even hooked. He was just grabbing on to the tail of the bait. <laughs> and uh, you see how it has like some stretch to it. It's very Alaz techy. And uh, I guess he couldn't like get his teeth off the bait. And I did touch him until the wave took him out. But <laughs> that's a good sign. There's some fluke here. Oh boy, a lot of little stripers right here outside the wash. They're kind of being pests right now because we're trying to catch fluke. That might be a fluke. There we go. Little flatty. Not bad, looks like 15 inches. Yo, we got a school of bunker. Just appeared out of nowhere right in front of me, so we're gonna switch back to plugging. There he is, fish on. There we go. Finally got something that pulls a little bit. Nice healthy blue. And uh, you know, there's a pot of bunker right in front of me. I saw a couple blow ups on the, on the bait and then I hooked up right on this fish on the uh, tattoo uh, sea dog. See you later you devil. Oh, there he is. That one crushed it pretty close. Decent one, getting a little bigger. All right, we got him unhooked. That's a decent sandy bluefish. Not a big one, but not a small one. There he goes, and he, he went that way, and then he went back out. Oh, just got hit right there. 
You guys, you guys see that? Oh, look at that right there. Must be a little striper. Oh, that was pretty cool. This little guy swirled on it like three times until he crushed it. Hey, we got a bass that's bigger than 15 inches. There we go. Yeah, last week we were getting a lot of bass that were like 28, 30 inches. I wonder where they went. All right, guys, take a look at this. I was walking back to the truck and look at this big, dead, black drum. Freaking massive. Look at the size of the scales. Pretty cool fish. Never caught one before. One day we will, but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get out of the ring, get back to the car. All right, guys, we're back. And uh, man, that was a grind this morning. And uh, early afternoon, it's two o'clock. I thought uh, the pre-storm bite was gonna be hot and heavy, but you know what? That's the way it goes. Uh, the only sure fire way to know if the bite is going to be hot is to get out there and try it. And we did. Um, you know, and my only excuse for not catching fish, really, I mean, because I fished like extremely hard, is that uh, the storm, you know, that was coming through and now it's kind of upon us, it, it kind of gradually, you know, started to rain like it was drizzling all morning and then it kind of slowly got heavier and heavier until now it's like really really raining and also the wind the wind kind of just like gradually got like heavier it really didn't like just all of a sudden like pick up and like start blowing and sometimes you know if it doesn't do that then it doesn't really trigger any like different kind of like feeding activity so uh, what we're gonna do then is like hang out for a little bit and then maybe get back out there for the late afternoon evening dusk bite so uh, to be continued I guess all right guys so uh, we're back out here it's uh, 5 p.m. right now and uh, we got completely different conditions than what we had this morning this storm is uh, really stirring now it's really going the water is really high up the water is really churned up and uh, let's see if it makes a difference. <laughs> this morning was kind of terrible. You know, only catching a couple bluefish, a bunch of rat bass, and uh, you know, a couple little fluke. And uh, this can make the difference, fishing mid-storm and post-storm. And I mean, this morning we really weren't trying to fish conditions like this. We were just trying to fish pre-storm conditions. And I always find that Usually in any given day or any given storm, pre-storm will be good and then post-storm will not be good or pre-storm won't be good and post-storm will be good. And uh, I saw a big pot of bunker as soon as we got here. So we're throwing this uh, deep diver. We're gonna cast it around and uh, see what happens. All right, guys, we're back, and I think we're done for the day. <laughs> we're, we're definitely done for the day. And it is eight after seven right now. We've basically been fishing for 12 hours or a very long time. <laughs> we started fishing at dawn today, and except for like an hour or two when we came back to the car to regroup, we've pretty much been fishing all day. And uh, it's been a grind of a day. The morning was a grind, and uh, it's raining harder now. It's blown a little bit harder, 
and uh, the water got a lot rougher this evening um, and uh, that's what I was kind of anticipating and we did find uh, a couple more quality fish you know as soon as we got out there I uh, you know found a pot of bunker and I threw this bomber out and we connected with uh, that 30 inch bass and sadly you know because I was only using you know my one GoPro and I only had one battery and I did have a couple spare batteries, but because of the rain and the rough conditions, I can't like, you know, change the battery without getting the GoPro wet. And then when I put the GoPro that's wet back in the waterproof uh, housing for the GoPro, the GoPro itself creates heat when it's power, powered on, and then that creates condensation on the inside of the case. So then you can't film anyway because there's fog on the inside of uh, the lens, so then you, can't, you couldn't even see anything. So uh, I did what I could, but we caught that 30 inch bass on this right here, you know, pretty much as soon as we got out there. And I'm assuming that that fish was under that pot of bunker. And then we continued to fish and we were throwing around this one and a half ounce bucktail with this split tail fat cow jig strip. And uh, we nailed about like a 30 inch bluefish. So definitely, you know, more quality this evening. But I mean, like the bite wasn't really on, like there, I kind of really had to work for my bites. And then after I caught those two fish, I fished down the beach for about a quarter mile, you know, casting that bucktail and not even a single tap. So I, got, I guess I just got lucky with those two quality fish. And then this morning, you know, this was the hot bait for uh, those blues that we caught, but uh, it was still a grind, you know, I had to work really, really hard to catch the few dismal, uh, you know, quantity of fish that I caught. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess that's just the way it is. That's fishing. And I fished my butt off today. So at least I can go home and say I tried. And if I was sitting at home and didn't try, I would probably feel worse than I do now. At least I tried. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to uh, post a comment if you have any questions about anything I can help you out with or uh, look in the description for all uh, my tackle and equipment and uh, what baits I was using and stuff like that. And uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you guys, I don't know if you can see it, I have a, a new rod rack in the back there that I uh, rigged up. And uh, yeah, if you wanna check that out, the link is in the description if uh, you know, you're know you looking for a rod rack for your vehicle. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the heck out of here, probably get a coffee because I'm exhausted and I got an hour ride home and uh, I gotta dry off. I need some food and uh, yeah. See you guys in the next one and never forget, live to fish, fish to live.